Hey, this is PJ with CLK Supplies, and I have a special guest for you today. Um, this is Kip with Hoffman's Lock and Key. Kip, thanks How's for coming on? on. Thank you. So I've known Kip for quite a few years, and something that he did, Kip, how many years have you been a locksmith as a whole? Um, almost 20 years. Almost 20 years. So yeah. you've, you've seen a lot of progression over the years, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, a lot. And something that Kip did, how many years ago? Did you buy Hoffman's Lock and Key? Um, it was 2013. 13, okay. Yeah, so January 2013. seven years. Yeah. Seven eight years. Yeah. So seven, eight years ago, Kip bought an existing locksmithing business called Hoffman's Lock and Key. And I wanted to sit down with him and have him share some of, your, of his thoughts and um, things that he went through to go through it. I think it's kind of a, a common thing that people are doing nowadays, you know, when you're buying a business, especially in the locksmithing industry, a lot of times it'll have someone else's, you know, um, family name on it or something. So, um, Kip, thanks for coming on and let's kind of get into it. Okay. Thank you. So what, when you decided that you wanted to be a, a business owner and mm -hmm. you wanted to still do locksmithing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you had to kind of make the choice whether or not you wanted to just start up your own business or buy an existing one and i'm just kind of curious what what went into that um decision well i i'd considered it for a while i'd, I'd worked for john hoffman the original owner for okay. um just about three years um and uh, i kind of fell into it he said i need somebody that i can just hand the keys to you and just go i'm running several other businesses i don't have time to manage this one anymore and do my other businesses, it's just too much. Okay. Can you just step right in? And I said, absolutely. You know, and, and I think in the back of my head, maybe I was thinking that, you know, maybe someday I could turn it into my own thing or something, you know? So at that time, um, I just went ahead and went for it. Um, I was working for a magazine company at the time or something, and that's kind of a dead end thing. I thought, you know, get back into locksmithing okay. and everything. and. Uh, I I just said, you know what, let's let's do this. And it went really well, worked for him for about three years, as I said. And he said, you know what, I I don't really want to do it anymore, run the business, have somebody work for me. My other businesses are taken off. Okay. Would you be interested in buying it? So it kind of fell in my lap. You okay. know, I kind of got lucky. So, But it, it, there were points where I thought, you know, maybe I should start a business or something, start a locksmithing business. Sure. And so I just lucked out with him and, you know, he said, hey, you want to buy it? And I said, you know, I'd, I'd definitely be interested. Okay. So, you know, we kind of worked out a deal and, okay. and it went from there and I slowly just kind of took over. Okay. How was going into that decision when you're like, man, I'm going to kind of do the same job, but um, I got to pay all the bills and I have to worry about advertising, right. and existing customers. I mean, was that pretty kind of nerve wracking a little bit for you and your family? I didn't realize at first because I'd worked for him, I thought the transition was gonna be less difficult. Okay. Because I've never experienced the ownership side of it. So I thought, oh, well, I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing I was doing before. And I learned very quickly that wasn't the case. Okay. You know, there, if you want to do it right, there's a lot you have to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, you got to dot your I's and cross your T's and sure. And uh, it was a learning curve, but I think it was a good experience and it taught me a lot. Okay. There's definitely some things I would have done differently, but. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So when you got to the spot where you're like, okay, you know, you made the deal, um, however that went, it got to a time where it's like, okay, I'm now the proud owner of this locksmithing business that mm -hmm. the customers are still seeing you, right? Because right. You're, you've been, you were the one doing the work. Right. How did that go when you were like, hey, so, um, you know, the old owner is no longer, um, like, did you put an announcement out or did you do it one by one, like to your normal, like customer base? How did you approach talking to them about it and reassuring them that, um, listen, like you're gonna keep getting the same level of service that you had um, you know, when the old owner owned it mm -hmm. and compared to, you know, me. Right. I think the biggest thing for me, my advantage was, is I already knew a lot of the people that I'd worked with and they had developed a relationship with me 
because John wasn't doing any locksmithing at all. I was doing running the entire show. Okay. You know, he was basically just doing the books, you know, taxes, all that stuff, all the business side. Okay. And I was doing all the work, the quotes, everything. So for me, that transition wasn't as difficult, but I would have people say, hey, you're not John, you know, jokingly. And I'd say, nope, no, I'm not, but I'm here to do whatever I can for you, you know? And uh, it didn't take them very long to learn that I was going to be there for them and do what I said I was going to do. Um, and I, I still get calls to this day, which is, I'm sure we'll go into this. One of the reasons I never changed the name is, well, we used John years ago and we remember the name. So we just looked up Hoffman's Okay. and there was the number. Okay. You know, so. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of the, my next question was, so you have been working in this, in this established business. You're now the owner. You've talked to the customers about it. Um, you seems like it, you had a good rapport with mm -hmm. most of them anyways. Right. Um, I'm sure there was probably a few of those like, well, you know, John's the old owner is my buddy and you know, right. you have to kind of make them feel at ease that you're going to continue to treat them the way you had been. Right. Right. Um, but the other part of it is, do you change the name? Right. I mean, like you said, it was, um, you know, Hoffman's Lock and Key. Um, last time I checked, there's no Hoffman in your name. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And they, they say, are you Hoffman or you, you know, what's the story? And I'll tell them, no, that was the original owner's name. Okay. Um, and I get that question all the time. Well, why did you keep the name? And that's one of my reasons is, you know, number one, I, I still have people look the name up and contact me because they used Hoffman's years ago. Okay. And you know, it, it's worked out. Um, to, to my advantage and and when you do that you you have to think about that person's name when you're doing the business you have to do them right and you have to live up to the work and their name if you're gonna keep it you need to do that and make sure that you're honoring that name with your business you know and, and your work ethic that's an interesting part right I mean because mm -hmm. Your people are calling, they may still think that John owns it, right? Right, Or did at least mm -hmm. for um, quite a few years afterwards. Yep. And so like you want to honor his name as well. Right. Uh -huh. So that went into it. So did you think about changing it at all? Like, like was that? Yeah. Um, I, I've considered it a few times and it always, I always came back to the same. It seems like every time I would consider changing it, I would get the same Oh, well, we found you by looking you up. I had your old business card or, you know, I remembered Hoffman's. I just remembered that part, you know, and okay. uh, we just went off that. And, and that always has kept me, you know, from changing it. But Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So what advice would you give someone who's looking at buying an existing business um, that maybe they were working in, maybe they weren't? Right, because I think it's one of those things that it's hard to really know what to expect, expect until, you know, you get the keys, right? You get the bills, mm -hmm. you know, you get the customer list. Some yep. are gonna stay with you. I'm sure through the transition, some of them maybe were like, you know what, we wanna see what else is out there, right? Right. Yeah. Um, what advice would you give to someone? Um, the buck definitely stops with you, you know, regardless of if it's your name or somebody else's. But as I said, you kind of, you want to live up to that and make sure you're honoring the, the person that you bought it from if you choose to keep that name. Um, the advice that I can give is make sure that you do it properly, you know, get an LLC or, or something like that and, and make sure that you have insurance and bonding and, you know, make sure you're covered legally because it can save you you know, down the road, if you did it properly, then you're protecting your business and you're protecting your yourself and your personal assets um, in case anything went wrong. Um, because you just, you know, in this world, things can always go wrong, but uh, um, definitely protecting yourself. Um, contracts are a good thing, you know, making sure that the customer understands exactly what the plan is and what's going to happen and communication with them 100 percent throughout the entire project um you know and and when you're doing quotes 
make sure that you've got everything in there you need to to protect yourself and what exactly is going to happen at what time and that there may be changes if you think there's going to be changes you know that's that's the simple okay the short version of it i guess is what okay. i'm saying but is uh i mean i could have after doing it i definitely could have went out and i know now that i could have just started one from scratch okay but for me, like I said, it kind of fell in my lap, so it worked out that way. I sure. figured, you know, I'm going to go with it. You've already got a customer base, you know. Mm -hmm. So I had that advantage. You do have to prove yourself if you're just starting all new and you don't have yeah. a customer base. You know, that's something to think about. But you shouldn't be afraid of the challenge. You just have to have a good work ethic, and customer service is key. Um, the way you treat people, and they want to know that you're listening to them, and that you're you're there to work for them and that you're not going to disappear as soon as the job is done and never be seen again if there's a problem sure okay no yeah. no um one last question for you mm -hmm. so I, I believe you just you know you and your family do the work mm -hmm. right um yeah. so you're just a single you know you have your van you have your um and just you right, right. yeah so going into it now you're the business owner like do you have any tips for guys for like a work-life balance right now? Do you do 24 hour? <clears throat> I do do 24 hour and here's what I'll say. And I learned this a few years ago, but I've, I've paid, tried to pay more attention to it. The older I've gotten, you can work your tail off. And if you cut too much into your family life, you can't get that back. Um, you need to take personal time for two reasons. One, so you don't burn out with the business um, because it, you'll burn candles at both ends and it's you'll have nothing to show for it at the end and that you're still showing your family that they're important enough that you stop and take time with them. Um, the business will always be there. Um, locksmiths tend to have a huge problem with taking time off. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn to just get away, turn off the phone, you know, take that week vacation in the summer, um, take a little time off, take a weekend off, you know, mm -hmm. it's important and it helps you recharge and kind of refocus and break away from it. And I've noticed when I do that and I come back, okay. I'm re-energized, I'm a little bit more ready to go, you okay. know, and, and kind of get back into it and really grind. So it actually gives you kind of a refresher, you know? Okay. And I, I actually went to a show. I took some time to go to some classes in Seattle for some stuff. And it was funny, one of the guys looked at me and he goes, you know, thank you guys for showing up as locksmiths. He goes, because I don't know what it is with you guys, but you never want to take time off to take a class. We can't get you here to do it. So thank you to the guys who took time to come see us. Sure. You know? So it's, it's important, you know, to, to take a little time and learn stuff, go spend time with your family. Awesome. Well, that's great that yeah. you've been able to... Um accomplish that and be able to do that yeah um i know it's a struggle with so many locksmiths right the phone's ringing you've paid for that advertisement mm -hmm. right and to be able to get to a spot where you can be at a healthy level and operate mm -hmm. your business and spend yeah. time with your family is great and that is one other thing you said something about advertisement is a lot of it you can do yourself or do it a lot cheaper than than paying someone to do all that for you you just okay. have to kind of get into it and research it, and um, I'd be happy to answer any questions for anybody that wanted to ask them. Okay. You know, on, on Are you talking about like front. online advertising? Yeah, you know, uh, websites and, you know, a little advertising here and there and doing your own Facebook page and things like that. There's things that you can do so you're not spending a ton of money for, you know, some place that wants to charge you $1,600 a month when you can do most of the legwork yourself sure. and save a lot of money. You know, okay. There's ways to save money. Okay, awesome. You have any good starting starting pl places? Like, I mean, obviously, I think in today's world, websites important, reviews yep. are important. You know, there's a lot of places that offer a cheap monthly rate for a, like a starter website. You can link it to your Google page. You know, there's some things, little things you can do on Facebook and stuff like that. Um, you know, just, just basic little things to get your name out there, you know, shirts, um, stuff like that. I know your dad is, has spoken several times. He's kind of the king of advertising. He's always come up with the most creative ways to yeah. get that name out there. And he did a really good job at that. Yeah. Um, so it's been kind of his thing that yeah, he's always, he's, um, 
His brain's always turning in that yep. department. He's he's a right. genius as far as that goes. He always yeah. impressed me with the way he was able to do the marketing like that. So absolutely, um, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. There's always little ways to save money. You want to save money where you can, but you don't want to go cheap. You know, mm -hmm. too cheap, I should say. Yeah, too cheap, Brent. Right? Yeah, interesting. Well, you know what, thank you so much for taking the time to hop on here with me and um, share your story with everybody. Yeah. And I appreciate it. And um, thanks, guys, and we'll see you next time. Glad to help. Thanks. Yeah.